this morning we're going to discuss the ego. Uh, there's probably no word other than God that appears more often in the Course. Uh, in the Course, the ego represents uh, not the ego of psychoanalysis, which is only one part of, of a tripartite uh, psyche or, or view of the mind, but the ego is used much more in the Eastern sense of representing our false self. The, the ego is the self that, that we believe separated from our source. It's a self that we believe I exists independent of God, is autonomous, unique, special, on its own, uh, and has its own existence. In fact, the ego ends up being its own creator. The, the Course talks about the ego's the belief that it, it is self-created rather than God-created. And of course, when the Course talks about the ego, it, it is really speaking about miscreation. Uh, the ego is the miscreate itself that we believe we stole from heaven, and we have now rendered to be the opposite of our true self, spell with a capital S, that, that God created. But what's most important when we consider the ego is to recognize that the ego is inherently nothing. Since the separation from God has never occurred, which of course refers to as the principle of the atonement, since the separation from God has never occurred, there can be no separated self. If there can be no separated self, there could be no ego. But what then is the ego? The ego is nothing more or less than the Son of God's belief, belief that he has separated. He has not separated. Both in the, his dream, within the illusion, he is free to believe anything he chooses. And so the problem is not the ego. The problem is not the ego thought system of separation, guilt, sin, fear, attack, uh, suffering, and death. The problem is not the world that arose from the ego, the world being the delusional system of those made mad by guilt, and guilt being basically the ego's bread and butter. Uh, just as a quick aside, guilt says that we have sinned, sin says that we have separated from God, and therefore the ego is real. So guilt is one of the, the cornerstones of the ego thought system that solidifies the belief that there is indeed an ego. There indeed is indeed a separated self sinful, guilty, afraid of God's punishment, and then has the need to, to protect itself by projecting its thought system out, making up a world and a body. But all of this is totally made up, which means the problem, once again, is not the ego thought system, it is not the separated self, it is not the world that arose from it. The problem is the Son of God's belief there is an ego. And when we speak on, uh, in this way, we are really speaking about the decision-making part of the mind. Uh, the Course itself never uses the word decision-maker except in, in one reference in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the manual where Jesus says the body is not the decision-maker. But, but throughout the Course, Jesus is appealing to the power of our mind to choose. Over and over again, we're told that we should choose between uh, Jesus' thought system and the egos, between God and the ego, between... Uh, of crucifixion and resurrection, uh, between salvation and damnation. And so what Jesus is appealing to in A Course in Miracles is this decision-making part of the mind that chooses between these two mutually exclusive thought systems. So the problem does not rest with what the decision-maker chooses, it rests with the decision-maker having chosen. The distinction is very, very important because it shifts the emphasis from the world to the mind, to the decision-maker, because that is the source of the problem and that is the source of the solution. In Lesson 79 and 80, where Jesus talks about there's only one problem and one solution, the one problem being uh, separation, the one solution being atonement, we could clarify that still further by saying the one problem is the mind's decision for the ego and the one solution is the mind's decision for the Holy Spirit. There is no other. So the whole focus now of A Course in Miracles shifts from the world to the decision-making mind that has simply chosen incorrectly. It has chosen the wrong teacher. So this means that the, we do not fight against the ego, we do not struggle against the ego, we do not commit what the Course would, would certainly not call a sin, but, but is certainly the, the most egregious error of all, of making the error real. When we fight against the ego, when we think the ego is the problem, when we resist it, when we cajole it, when we deny it, when we project it, we are simply saying there is indeed an ego, and that's the problem, and that's the problem I need to address. That's exactly what our ego, our false self, likes, because that makes it real, at which point it can never be undone. The only way the, the, the ego can be undone is by recognizing there is no ego. There is only a thought system of the ego. 
And in correcting and changing that thought system, we find our true redemption and salvation.